All right, well, let's go Miles Sanders here. Um, so kind of Jacobs is kind of the one right there if we're just talking about these three guys. Sanders is probably, you know, two right after him and, and making some waves. He's he's going to go ahead and secure himself one of those same bags, it would seem. Um, 13 games for Miles Sanders, so same same threshold, which is great to see for Miles. It's been a, been a bugaboo of his um, to, you know, not be able to complete uh, the entire season. Um, and, and so again, all these numbers that I'm using, I should have stated this on the first are filtered through PFF at 20% of 275 attempts. Um, so that's where I'm getting the, uh, the numbers, uh, Just where keep they it real, man. On Just those. keep it 100. Uh, well, all, all I do is keep it 100. All we do no is cap. put out fire content. No cap. 100% real talk. All facts. Um, all entertainment. Facts, all those things. Um, so Miles Sanders is, is, uh, graded out at 86.8 for PFF's run grade. That's fifth. RB10, uh, 199.3 for his season total, 15.3 points per game. He will be 26 heading into next season. He turns 26 May uh, 1st. Uh, 264 attempts, that's tied for 7th. hundred or 1,068 yards, that's tied for 5th. Um, his yards per attempt, 5.2, that's good for 6. Zero fumbles for old Ooh. Miles there. Um, 11 TDs, tied for 3rd. Now, that was a problem of his a little bit, right? Something something with, with Miles here that I don't think we're getting the full complement of is the targets. Only 23 and 18 catches, um, which I, I, not a think, ton of volume I think that's to go in his wheelhouse, there. but it's not it's not really there. But it's 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 nice to see the other numbers that we just the attempts and, and yardage be high for him. Um, and then uh, yards per contact per attempt. Um, he's seventh with 600 or uh, yards per co- yards after contact 640. He's seventh, and you know, out of um, th- there's not a whole lot of guys with over 200 attempts in, ahead of him, or rather, the guys some of the guys ahead of him don't have over 200 attempts. Um, so just as a threshold for yards after contact, there yards after contact per attempt 3.14. That's good for 18. Uh, 37 missed tackles forced. That's good for 10th. Um, yards 10 plus or runs over 10 plus or more 31 good for third design runs of 15 yards or more 11 that's good for seventh um, so you know miles having a having a really good year here and um, let's just same conversation we just had with Jacobs one thing I want to add Go to ahead. Miles Sanders uh, just going back and watching some of the cut-ups of some of the games that he's played He's really come a long way from where I had him evaluated coming out of college where he was kind of a perennial bouncer. He was always just trying to get outside, just continuously trying to win on his athleticism. And watching these games, like, he's showing patience. He's cutting up field. He's he's getting north and south. Like, it's a joy to watch. Now, I don't know how much of that is – his maturation and how much how easy it is out there with that offensive line because those dudes are fucking crushing it. You know, it's it's easy to I run think the that's ball. Part behind of the, the reason like why that. you're seeing this attempt number be so high is because they have kind of coached him into maybe where they 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 want him to be and operate this offense uh, a little differently. But I just had to give a shout out because yeah. I was crushing him early in his career about how he doesn't really know how to play the game. He's just athletic and bounces it and w- and won a lot in college doing that. But now he he's like a true running back. He's out. He's waiting for the hole. It's open up and hits it, and and he's trying to. He's not thinking about going outside. He's trying to get north and south. I didn't. I didn't think I was going to see that. You know, watching these cut ups, and I was. I just had to give a shout out to to uh, Miles Sanders. Obviously, this offense again. Before I open it up to 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 you over there, uh, JB, um, is is affording him more opportunities in the red zone. But they were being a little funky with red zone carry. So the the touchdown number is good to see. Plus Jalen Hurts. Rushing so many touchdowns in the number being tied for third is is really great with Miles Sanders here. Um, and and it's, it's sort of, a you know, we'll get to Montgomery in a second, but that's, you know, something that certainly is hurting him. Justin Fields breaking off long runs and, and running in touchdowns, which is, is a problem for, you know, some running backs with the great rushing quarterbacks, even though, you know, they are affording more red zone opportunities because they can move the ball. But everybody's eating, um, you know. Sometimes it does get a little weird there with Boston Scott and, and Gainwell, and they're kind of splitting up some of those targets and even some of those touchdowns. So I think there's even more room for Miles Sanders if he doesn't stay an eagle to really grow and, and have even more targets and touchdown opportunities. Obviously, if he goes somewhere terrible where the offense isn't as good. but um, I'd like him to stay in Philly, but let's hear what your take is on all that, Jamie. Yeah, I actually agree with you. I would like to see him stay in Philly the way he's grown into that offense. I mean, I I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, 
with what you said, Jason, but, you know, with Miles Sanders, first of all, he has more rushing touchdowns this year than he has his first three years combined. All right. All right. And a lot of that does come down to the Casey, like you mentioned, the usage in the red zone. Like we got a lot of Boston Scott last year. We got a lot of Jordan Howard. And yeah, some of that was because of the games that Miles Sanders missed. But Miles Sanders, you know, he, he's extremely efficient. He, he's getting the work where it counts. Of course, I would like to see the the uh, targets and receptions go back up to where they were, to, you know, at the beginning of his career. And there were some concerns. You know, drops were an issue. Uh, uh, route running at times, I think that was a concern for people. But overall, I you have to like what you've seen. But for Miles Sanders, I mean, you look at the last three weeks for him. Uh, uh, three weeks ago, he had Green Bay, 143 yards, two touchdowns. And then Tennessee, you know, 24 yards, but found the end zone. And then the Giants, 144 yards, two touchdowns. So I think this would be a little bit of a different conversation three weeks ago. You know, but sure. so over, overall, I think where we're talking about him with Josh Jacobs, number one with these out of these guys, Miles Sanders, number two, I think that I think that's reasonable. And for me, if I'm putting a price tag on Miles Sanders, he is. Uh, and I, I kind of talked about this uh, when I was on with you guys talking about the commanders wide receivers, uh, you know, t- describing a player as being maybe a buy on the buy side of like neutral or vice versa, where it's not necessarily like a strong buy or sell, but for Miles Sanders, he would be on the, the buy side of neutral for me. I have him in that 15 to 21 tier averaging out a lot of different uh, sources, you know, the crowdsourcing everybody's favorite website, keep trade cut. I think the data is questionable, but I think that gives you a real time overreaction to things. And the same with fantasy calc. Uh, That's another good one in terms of quick reactions, but uh, he's coming at running back 20 there. So for me, I think there is an opportunity like there's still going to be people, I think, just because of their names. Like you could probably get Miles Sanders plus a small piece for Najee Harris. Again, just because Miles Sanders, he kind of has that stink to him. Again, certainly more so prior to the last three weeks. Uh, but I, I think that's possibly something that you could look into uh, in terms of 23 picks. I'm even further back now. I'm looking at that 109 to 112 range. That's going to be a lateral move for me. So ideally, if I can get, if I, if I'm looking at your team and I see that, you know, you didn't get a first round by your team's a little questionable. I'll move Miles Sanders for your 23 first. And then I would look to backfill the position, even if I was contending with another, another piece. But yeah, there's certainly a difference between Jacobs and Sanders for me. I, and I think that's maybe, mid to late second value overall. But uh, yeah, I mean, Miles Sanders has had a heck of a season and for him to stay in Philly uh, familiar with, with what's going on, really excelling with Jalen hurts, opening up lanes for him. That offensive line has been strong. So I think Jason, maybe that's the reason you're not seeing him dancing as much. You know, he knows those holes are going to be there. He knows that Jalen hurts and his mobility is going to be an advantage to him. So uh, yeah, let's see Miles Sanders stay. I'm actually surprised you would go that high with the rookie pick. Uh, yeah, I, I thought, I thought for, for sure he'd for be a hard sell for you. Yeah, it'd be 26 in in May before the next season starts. When, when we when we were That's just looking hot at fire there. When we were just looking I, at Josh Jacobs, you know, you look at the the snap percentage and all that. And if you're looking at sleeper, pretty much all of Josh Jacobs' snaps percentages in that green 80 mm-hmm. percent. Miles Sanders all in that cautionary yellow 55, 58, 65, 54, 53 percent. Just um, kept him healthy, and maybe, um, but being pretty efficient with the touches and, and breaking away uh, bigger runs here, as of as of late. Um, My concern would be if he does go elsewhere, and you know we go through early stages of the off season, we don't hear anything about a potential extension, and we think the writing's on the wall that he is going to be playing somewhere else. Then I think the efficiency comes down and you have to see an uptick in usage. And just like you said, uh, maybe then th- there's a, an injury concern, you know, what we've seen previously in past seasons with him. So I, 
where where if you had to guess where I was comfortable moving a rookie pick for him, what would you have thought since you thought I came I, in too I high? Put, I would have put you right at the bottom of the first. Like 112 would have been like I'd where you wanted in the to go. Second. Yeah, and basically kind of top end of the second. Yeah. would and pl- Maybe you're saying then you need a little – a little added on the back end of that with a third or something, you know, some other sort of action, some combo platter action. Um, but one thing to note with them is that Shane Steichen is, is probably, there's not a whole lot of hot coaching offensive candidates right now. And Shane Steichen is the, their OC. And I, there's a, probably a really good chance of that, that OC walk. So they'll either have to hire mm-hmm. within or find somebody else new, which can change the dynamic of some things uh, as far as the way the offense runs. But, um, who Sirianni is is, is often also offensive minded so you would think it would be a a little bit more of a of a Shanahan style thing where you can lose the guy and still hold the system kind of together uh so maybe not too big of a concern there yeah and back to the the rookie pick I'm sorry I'm I'm go, go for ahead. it uh I mentioned earlier I have that drop off between 108 and 109 so for me if I'm contending and I especially if I secured that first round buy that's when I'd be comfortable moving that pick. And then the drop off at 108, I think it goes down to 110. If those two quarterbacks and Levis and Richardson get the draft capital that I'd mentioned earlier. So I, I would be very cautious and careful. Pay attention to, to your team. Don't, don't get, you know, false hope overall. But if you secure that first round buy and you're comfortable, but maybe you have a, a running back that, you know, maybe you have a Ramondre that you were counting on. He gets a little dinged up. You have uh, da, 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 Kenny da, Walker, da, maybe who you were getting on, or Damian Pierce, who you were getting some Travis you know, production Etienne hasn't from. been coming through for you recently. Pierce is a great one, possibly all three weeks. Now you need somebody to backfill, and that could be a situation where you're looking to move that late first. So, yeah, I I, I don't think we're we're completely talking different languages here. Yeah. All right. Let's hear let's, from the Penn State grad. He's got the we are. Uh, first of all, we're talking about number one running back recruit Miles Sanders. First of all, by the way, he's taking him to the dashboard concert. Oh, for sure. Him and him and Saquon both for sure. Which one? Who, Journey who, Brown, all of them. Oh, shout out Journey Brown. <laughs> got engaged today. Shout out Journey Brown. Don't stop believing. Um, I don't think that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Anyways. Boy, dumb up. All right. What so, you got? Are you so, loving some Miles Sanders, huh? Right now? I'm even surprised. I'm going to piggyback what you guys said. I'm even surprised that you were as high on him, JB, as well there, too. So um, I was reading the um, uh, everyone's favorite duo mock draft of Mc, uh, McShay and Kuyper. Bijan. Bijan at 105? Mm-hmm. Come on. That's wild. But I mean... To the Eagles for the, the rest Eagles. of the listeners. Yeah, for the Eagles. Uh, to the Eagles. Yeah, to the Eagles. Because they're like, why would they pay for Miles Sanders $8 million a year when they can pay Bijan four? I mean, makes Who, a lot of sense. Whose pick do they have? The Saints. Not, they have the Saints pick. Saints. <laughs> for who? That was the Olave trade. Yeah. I think. Yes, correct. <clears throat> Got um. Him. All right, yeah. well, that would be devastating ask. to Miles so, Sanders case. So, well, but, he, but Casey wants him moving from... From Philly, even so, he can get more targets and touchdown opportunities. I, 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 obviously, what we're seeing right now is is fantastic. But I, I, I would, I think I would prefer to maybe, you know, let him let that butterfly peacock spread his wings and maybe get, you know, you're getting greedy here to try to get the best of both worlds. You're getting the attempt numbers right now again, tied for seventh and touchdown um, opportunities based t- on that offense. Sure, sure, sure. And and it's what you what know. I what we're getting here with eleven touchdowns with a running back. Shit, you could even say that's probably going to regress. That's no that's, matter what. Jalen Hurts is is that's a crazy number uh, for TDs for a rushing quarterback. Although they're scoring touchdowns at a super high clip uh, currently, and we're probably it's fucking Oprah out there. You get a touchdown. And- you F- Philly's play. number two right now. Uh, when they get in the red zone, they score a touchdown on seventy four percent of their oh. their their uh, drives. Oh. So with the with the TDs being that high and enough t- attempts and yardage, that we don't need the the targets and catches to be anything crazy. But we could we could tamp those numbers down a little bit, get some more catches. And I, I think I think what we're seeing from Miles Sanders right now isn't that isn't just because he's on a really good offense that obviously helps. But I think we're seeing. I think you said it, the, the maturation of him and and the style and you know you you go 
you, you put Miles Sanders on on the the Steelers, and I don't think you have he has any much more success than Najee Harris is having. Obviously, Miles Sanders is much more athletic than Najee Harris. I'm just putting a bad offensive line in front of him rather mm-hmm. than a than a great yeah, offense. We saw that line. at Penn State when the Penn State's offensive line was trash, and he was that's when he became bouncy because he was trying to be uber athletic. Let's we went the picks. Let's hit a couple players here, and we'll probably touch on some of the same ones. Let's go Ramondre right off the rip. Um, I think that tells it all. <laughs> it's that's tough. I have tell me you hate Ramondre without telling me here. you hate Ramondre. No, no. Um, What's your level of concern <laughs> about <laughs> drink? Man, the level of concern is nowhere close to the Kyler level of concern. Jesus, too, right? right there. <laughs> yeah, you trying to get me drunk. I, I, well, yeah. Level of concern. Anyway, um, <laughs> but, uh, so I, I, w- I would leave, I would take Ramondre. I would take Ramondre over Miles Sanders. Uh, and, and again, Woo! part of it goes down to the, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for target share, and Ramondre is getting those sweet, sweet dump offs. Mm. You know, so even if they do split work, uh, give me the upside with what he's getting in terms of the usage as opposed to a super efficient Miles Sanders who's doing it on the ground where things could really change with the new landing spot. So, yeah, give me Ramondre there. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Anybody disagree? Nope. You taking Ramondre too? Yeah, I had him ranked I had him ranked <laughs> higher than him in the running back show we did a couple weeks ago. Well, what about these last 3 weeks? <laughs> I don't get future points for the for the last 3 weeks. I think I think I know the answer since we just put Stevenson there and I would assume that he's ahead of this guy but Kamara I have them in the same tier. You know, you're buying back a few years with Miles Sanders, and you got to think that after beating the shit out of Suspension somebody, looming. <laughs> you yeah. ha- I, let's right? Go, let's like, go Chubb. Let's go Chubb. He's a little bit younger than those other older running backs. Probably pretty. Give me the give me the, give me the full Chubb. Give me you going Chubb? Over I'm going Chubb. Sanders, Mixon. I'm going Mixon. Going Mixon. Um, how about Damian Pierce? Come on. I'm going I'm going Mouse. Of course. My guy. Of course. I'm going Mouse. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you don't have to apologize to me. You don't have to apologize to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you're going Miles too over Pierce? Yeah. I'm taking Pierce just to reset the clock. I don't think they're all that different of a player. Um just one guy's on a horrible offense right now and the other guys on the we, best one. We saw we saw we saw one, yeah, you know, which we don't know where he's gonna be uh, you know, going next, next year. Pierce year. is certainly gonna be in Texans Ville there, but you know, maybe we get CJ Shroud, and maybe we, you know, maybe we can get this offense. We saw them really when they were when they were Captain Try Hard those first couple of weeks, the Texans <laughs> didn't look that bad and they were keeping it competitive. Now you just had it in in house uh in state rivals there coming up with, with the Cowboys and it seemed like, you know, there was a big spread there and they kind of might have might have brought out a, you know, Mills came back in, but there was a stretch there where it, it looked like hurt. the Texans had stopped giving any sorts of fucks. Um, and Zero obviously bucks given. Pierce wasn't wasn't great in there. And this week, Pierce was pretty decent. And I, I think, you know, got hurt near the end of that game. Probably could have had some more he missed points. the whole fourth quarter. Um, uh, you know, I, I, no, I, I, I will say this. I, I have them in the same tier. So I'm saying Sanders over Damian Pierce. The, the great opportunity here is that. If if Casey, if you're contending, maybe not you specifically because you you lean Pierce anyway, but if you had Pierce in your starting lineup, and now there's a, a gaping hole there, to kind of kind of like the holes that Miles Sanders ru- is running through with that Philly uh, offensive line, I I do believe that especially with some recent performances that you get Damian Pierce plus like. Miles Sanders for Damian Pierce plus a mid second. I then will certainly switch to the Pierce side, uh, or Damian Pierce and uh, Rondell Moore. Yeah, I, I think another injured player. Uh, so something like that. There are certainly situations that make sense that you could get done. So that's what I would be Little looking DPJ at. DPJ on there. I he I have him in the same tier as Rondell Moore. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, little reemergence here, but been injured. Uh, would you swap for little the, Mo with the gimpy leg? Little, little younger. Uh, came in pretty young. Now he's had well, had an injury. Smooching with here. everybody. 
We I, listen. Last year, I couldn't find Home Alone or Home Alone Two on any network. <laughs> like it was never on. Now, uh, Freeform, it's freaking on there every day. <laughs> like, and we'll turn it on, and I'm like, we just watched this, but like, I'm, it's either that or I'm going to watch reruns of Seinfeld I've seen a thousand times. <laughs> yeah. So let's keep. Let's, it's I'm the right, holiday. I'm season. right in the middle of season three on Seinfeld right now. Oh, man. Have, you, have you watched Joe Davola where they trade the helmet for the radar detector and Kramer gets kicked in the head? Have you you've watched it before? Or oh, is this I'll, the first time through? times I've seen. Oh, OK, OK. A million times. I've Y'all, watched. I'm finishing up the most recent season of Curb. So good. Oh, oh I don't think God. I've seen the most recent one. Yeah. What's it ending with? No, I've seen the Latte Larry's was the last one. that. I've yeah, seen. this is the next one. Yeah, I haven't he's, seen that he's, yet. he's like I trying to that. he's trying he's courting a city councilwoman to try and get her to repeal the law that you need a fence around your pool <laughs> because someone died in his pool and the guy's daughter is like Upset forcing him it. to be an actor actress in his show and she's ruining it and it's just this whole fucking sh- he's fucking crushing you know <laughs> it is i've been laughing out loud it's not that often that you fucking laugh out loud sitting by yourself watching shit like this is only a few shows i feel is like the where, city councilman fawn moscato yeah Sounds like an episode of New Girl. No. Um, but, uh, anyway, I'll take Dobbins. Fantastic. Dobbin? You're, you're taking Dobbins? taking Dobbins? I'll take Dobbins. Be- because just... Uh, see, you talk about... You you talk about the, the red zone upside. You know, like, it, it's all, it's a very similar situation, right? You, you, you have a, a Russian quarterback. You have... Uh, red zone opportunities, and I know it's been a little tough sledding for Baltimore recently, but overall, I, I you know, I, you're missing Dobbins, you're missing Rashad Bateman, uh, Lamar is dinged up. I think that's bound to happen. Uh, but then you're buying back what a year and a half, and you, you get the extra year here on the contract. You know that J.K. Dobbins is gonna be in Baltimore, both have question marks, but that's the reason I'm gonna go Dobbins over Sanders, but again. Same tier. If I can pivot from one to the other and get a plus, sign me up. How do how does the landing spot? I mean, obviously we're just speculating now. How does the landing spot affect how you're gonna think with these guys? Like, like what like what would be like the top landing spots for these free agents? Is it is it Kansas City? Is it Buffalo? Is it Miami? Is it? I think I th- Miami is certainly one that makes sense. I'm seeing mocks that that have Buffalo taking another running back. I'm like just. Like, just stop. I know Devin Singletary, he's going to be gone. But, like, j- j- just grab some free agent there. Well, yeah, um, I don't, I don't want any running back that I well, like to go to the, Buffalo. No matter what they do, they, they don't want to run it. No well, matter who well, they have, that, they don't want to run it. In that same mock draft, McShay, Mc, 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 McShay, McShay and Kuiper had Denver taking Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't make in any the, sense either. In the first, too. Um, so, ideal, ideal landing spot... I mean, it's like the usual suspects. Like I, I, you mentioned Tyler Algier, but I would love to see Atlanta. Uh, you know, if they bolster that that uh, offensive, uh, the offensive side of the ball. Uh, Carolina, Carolina, Car- Carolina. I mean, Deontay Foreman has looked good. You know, so it, the, the the team is in complete <laughs> shambles. I. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm just going through teams here. Da, 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 da. Javante or or Miles Sanders? I'll take Javante. Okay. Yeah. How about Kittle? Let's throw a tight end in there. Tight oh, end he, him. He's, he's been, been a little weird uh, for him, and it's he. You know he's great, but it's just like it seems like it's. I, I'm I'm a huge Niners guy, and I'm I'm I think I'm just off the fucking Kittle train, man. It's so hard to to start him every week and and because you of the 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 cost the output that you get from week to week is not and obviously i know the tight end landscape is tough but um yeah i read some stat about how after this last week evan ingram jumped from like tight end 14 to four uh (laughs) one week scoring (laughs) which he did put up a fuck ton of points but like that's wild but one week's propping Joe Mixon up pretty heavy. Now that Mixon's been pretty good, but that, that fifty burger, yeah, really shot him up too. Okay, so on on this uh, on this week's episode of Dynasty Theory, we talked about 
uh, targeting certain players as contenders. And we got into a discussion, Dan, Mitch, and myself, of CMC, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle. And we were discussing uh, value beyond 22 versus cost to acquire versus immediate production and what made sense. If we were getting every factor in terms of players we were targeting, even in two PPR, Kittle was the last piece for me. Like I, he, I, uh, I have a couple teams that I have Kelsey and, you know, maybe I'm out of the playoffs, uh, you know, finish one spot out. And I have people offering me Kittle plus a small piece. Hey, you know, four years age difference. Even if I'm rebuilding, I'm going to stick with Kelsey. Like, I, I think over the next two years, that's not even close still. I mean, hell, Kelsey could be 48 years old still chugging along. We don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I, even in two PPR settings, I would lean Miles Sanders. For the tight because, end. Yes, for the tight end. Yeah. Uh, even two PPR for receptions isn't helping Damian Pierce, but uh, no, I had to. <laughs> I had Bazinga! <laughs> yeah. uh, no, 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 but uh, for Miles Sanders, I, not to say he has uh, insulation in his value by any means because he's a running back, but for a tight end, even a higher end tight end, I, I could see Kittle continue to slip. If his name wasn't George Kittle, I don't I don't know if he's now it'll be interesting to see what happens without Debo here and moving forward for a couple of weeks if he can get the, the points per game back up and really mm-hmm. help his his draft stock. But I think just with McCaffrey sticking around there now and Debo gonna be there locked up, we'll see what happens with Ayuk. Uh, yep. Elijah Mitchell will come back. It, you know, we just I don't think we're none of the quarterbacks, regardless of who it is, are good enough to really be supporting three or four elite players in not the offense itself is very good and they can have good games uh but to be you know very confident in the startability week in week out to what you're paying for Kittle and I think it started to slip last year and it'll probably continue to slip a little bit still probably be higher than maybe what it, what, what it's been worth which is you know sort of what you were just saying do you really know how and look, Trey at, Lance look is? at the right and Look at the way Kittle plays. I mean, he's a WWE guy in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go, going crazy. Uh, but then, like, when we see Lance next year, most likely, who's to say this isn't a Atlanta Falcon situation where we just don't see the volume? And I, I think you might have been mentioning that as I cut you off. And listen, guys, I'm just so jacked to, to talk to you guys. I yeah. told you. Fuck, I'm just so excited. Jack I apologize. Let, let me let me let's hit one rookie wide receiver and we'll move on to the last guy Montgomery here. Um, and maybe maybe we'll throw in another one more rookie if this is too easy. Christian Watson or Miles Sanders? Oh my god, you keep giving me guys in the same tier for me. Well, that's uh, good then. I'm right. I'm right it, on. I'm right on value. You're, then. you're right on the money. I. It's I kind of what go. I do. I don't know. I, you know. <laughs> uh, this is like the Gabriel Davis situation on steroids. Like he's getting what 40% touchdown rate, like absolutely absurd. And I'll cheer his hat. And does, does Romeo got to regress though, huh? Bust on like, Gabriel. I mean, 40% holy. What's I mean, your level of we concern talking? with Christian Watson's touchdown variance? Yeah. We were what, talking about Jahan Dotson next year. We were talking about Jahan Dotson at the beginning of the season yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. those four or five touchdowns and, you know, I, I don't know if he scored one since. Yeah, when he played, the next game he played, I'm pretty sure. No, he had one game, and then the next game he scored. Yeah, he was out for like five weeks. Can't score a touchdown if you're out, you know? But came the, guys I draft, the guys I draft can. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. Uh, da, 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 da. Give me Miles Sanders over Watson. Okay, how about Burks? Burks. Okay, all right. I had to get there. Well, when we when we discussed uh, Damian Pierce before the season started, were we putting the threshold... RB2. To wager for, was it targets or receptions? Because we put a 50 oh my on. God. Would we have been talking about receptions or targets? Couldn't tell. We were I, arguing about I don't how know, many but targets. You got to get your get. listeners to tell you, so they got to go back, listen to the episode tonight. 
yeah. or whenever you throw this on. So go back, listen to that episode, and you can tell Jason Casey. Like, and team crunch the numbers. Well, he was on pace to pass 50 targets. We've got a couple of these, and, and from here on out, when we do, like, we're going into next season. We didn't just, really make a bet. I know, we discuss, I know, I know. We, we almost, we discussed we're gonna have a We're going to have a board of bets that we need to keep that week, because we've got, we've got a couple that we're like, questioning what the totals were on things and we just need to we need to get this all straightened up um and 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 the ship run tight all right so let's let's get one more in here so get you out of here um in in roughly an hour or so um let's go right 